Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am um, permit me a few minutes leave from the subject at hand um, to take this opportunity to announce this week as Public Service Week. And this Public Service Week, Mr. Speaker, is under the theme Public Sector Modernization, Repositioning and Rebranding the Public Service to Improve Service Delivery. We have a week of activities and many times we hear a lot of talk about public officers and we need to find a little time to show appreciation for the persons who serve the public in St. Lucia. And the week started yesterday and it continues until Sunday. The 23rd of June every year internationally is observed as Public Service Day. So on Sunday 23rd, it will be the International Day of Celebration for Public Officers. Mr. Speaker, all of us here are public officers. And yesterday we had job shadowing where the young people came into different government offices to observe how public officers work. Today they have the Mingle Day, Tech Tip Tuesday. Tomorrow they have Staff Appreciation Day and I call on all my colleagues here to show appreciation for our public officers who have been working very hard to, to, to get this government to be a successful government and to continue to serve the people of St. Lucia. On Thursday, we'll take a break because we had planned to have the Minister for Public Service Top Performer Award and the different ministries will have the top performers. But in light of the cricket and other activities going on, we have decided to push it a little later, but we do plan to have this activity. And on Friday, Mr. Speaker, we have an ecumenical service at the Holy Trinity Anglican Church starting from 9.30 to 11.30 where we are going to call on the Lord to guide us to continue to serve the public. On Friday, and we continue in the afternoon at the Derek Walcott Square with public service fair. The different ministries will have different booths to display what their ministries are doing. We are encouraging ministers to meet the public. Sometimes people have difficulty, they say they can't meet you, they have to place appointment. Well, they might meet some of you right there at Derek Walker Square and intermingle with the public. And on Sunday, we have a fun walk starting from Cots Maricil down to VG Playing Field. And we will have some sporting events. So I'm encouraging all public officers in all different ministries to participate. Mr. Speaker, as I turn quickly to the subject at hand, I lend my support to the Pension Amendment Bill. And this Pension Amendment Bill is actually creating history. And this is a government that has been creating history for the last almost three years. And I say history in the sense that, Mr. Speaker, we are talking about giving pensioners a minimum amount or they should get no less than $725. Now, Mr. Speaker, I was expecting and anticipating support for this bill with a but. And they said never support something and then add a but. You have to say and and not but. Because once you say, but Mr. Speaker, you are, you are not genuine about your support. There is also something about August 1st, because I heard the leader, the Prime Minister did mention the effective date of this amendment. On August 1st, there are many magic things that will happen in St. Lucia. And I can understand the significance of August 1st, which speaks to freedom, liberation, and smiles for many, many, many people. 
Mr. Speaker, as stated by the Prime Minister and member for Cast Resist, we are looking at 130 persons who will benefit from the government's um, pension amendment. And we can multiply that. 130 persons have children. They have grandchildren. And some of them have great grandchildren. And whatever increase that this government gives these persons is a relief for these people who have been supporting those persons who had to survive on income less than $725, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, pension is a very serious matter. We have many persons who have worked in different sectors, in government and in the private sector. Some of these people have lived a distant life, but after their pension, some of them rapidly find themselves into poverty. Because pension also has a cutoff line in terms of how long you are supposed to live. And some people live longer than their stated pension. And therefore, you find that the pension is not sustainable. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, you have an individual who was a principal of a school. And after this person has retired, has lived longer than whoever had set pension that after pension you're supposed to live X number of years. And that person is getting about $300 or $200 a month. And you have no other sources of income. How will that person survive? Mr. Speaker, the talk on the other side is, why now? It's too small. I always believe, Mr. Speaker, that one is of greater value than zero. One is always better than zero. Because those who will question why now, or is it too small, did nothing about it. That's true. They did nothing about it. They didn't care about it. And no matter what, how small it is, Mr. Speaker, is going to bring some smiles on the faces of the persons who will benefit from this amendment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for the last almost three years, I have seen this government under the leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister look at persons. Persons, it's not just about an empty pocket. We are looking at persons where the pocket was not just empty, ching ching. but the pocket had holes. And they promised ching ching. No matter what you put in that pocket, it will not stay there. The ching ching means stay. So the first thing we had to do, Mr. Speaker, was to stitch the pockets. And then we started putting something inside of the pocket. And that is why some people can survive today. And Mr. Speaker, for those who did not have the time to go out there in the inner communities to see where people live in St. Lucia, it is heart-wrenching, Mr. Speaker. And this, this amendment to the bill is targeting the vulnerable, the most needy. These are the people who will cherish that increase in the pension. Not for those who have been living lavishly, have enjoyed life, or got things that they never worked for. These are people who have put in their time and effort, working day and night for government. And now these people are rapidly slipping downhill into poverty. The government right now is coming to the rescue. And this government, Mr. Speaker, under the leadership of the Prime Minister, has gone beyond the call of duty to help the vulnerable people in St. Lucia. It's amazing. 
And Mr. Speaker, as we speak of pension, I can take you back in 1992, Mr. Speaker, when the public service looked at reclassification of the public service. And at that time, nurses and teachers were among the lowest paid. And it was the reclassification that put a little extra dollar on the payroll for these people. These are persons who give more than the, 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 the duty or the pay that they get. And that is what we call deferred gratification, Mr. Speaker. Many people work for small salaries now with the hope that when they retire, when they pension, they will get a contribution that will sustain them until they die. But what happened? You get low salaries while you are working. When you pension, the, salary con the pension continues to be low. So you will never live a decent life. So Mr. Speaker, we are coming to the rescue of these people. And it's not just about the pension amendment bill, Mr. Speaker. We need to look at the number of initiatives undertaken by this government. And one of the biggest challenge, I've always asked the Prime Minister for the formula, but all of us have to try and learn it ourselves, is the allocation of resources. Allocation of resources that will deal with equity to bring about equality. When you have so much, Mr. Speaker, and you have so many to feed, what formula are you going to use so that you can give service to the persons who are most in need? You will target the persons who need it the most. I know the Prime Minister has a calculator, and he has removed some keys on them. And these keys, from what I am seeing, it has division and it has subtraction, but I don't think the addition and multiplication sign is there. So therefore, it is not getting bigger and bigger, but it's a matter of managing the resources that you have. And when we manage it, you have to go inside of some of the communities. And Mr. Speaker, it would be good to take a little drive with me in some areas in my constituency to see the quality of life and what we take the people from point A to bring them to point B and how these people appreciate the contribution that this government is making to their lives. Mr. Speaker, after they get the pension, after they get the minimum wage, we come back with the spraying can, Mr. Speaker. And we help them. We give them vouchers. We give them hampers. We give them internet access. We give pay school facilities fee for the children. We pay CXC fees for the children. We get laptops for the children. We get Chromebooks for the children. We increase support for the elderly. Caregivers, the Prime Minister has increased the number and so many people who do not have people to care for them. Mr. Speaker, pensioners, we are taking care of them, but we have also done something even while they are waiting, where the Prime Minister gave them a one-time $600 and people came out in tears because they had never seen a gift like that deposited on their bank account. Mr. Speaker, this government went out and increased the teaching material allowance to teachers. And those of you who have not gone through the sweat in the classroom would not understand what I mean. The teachers are the ones that take their little salary and still help these children when they come. If they haven't had breakfast, if they do not have books, they do not, they go and get. So this teaching material allowance the kind-hearted teachers will use it again and help these children in the schools and increase the teaching material allowance.
from $800 to $1,400. That's touching the lives of thousands of persons throughout the country in every community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we talk about the housing repair program, Mr. Speaker. And what will be interesting, Mr. Speaker, is when these programs will be flashed on your national television, and you will see the before, and you will see the after, you will see what this government has done for people. Mr. Speaker, we have spoken about the distress fund. People say, oh, what is step? Well, I didn't know the people in my constituency had renamed it. All the time so people say step, they say stimulus, so I'm saying the same thing too. But they came and they told me, what's about the food on the table? So I asked them, what do you mean by food on the table? They said, yes, the program, they call step, that's what they call food on the table. Mr. Speaker, we talk about the CDP projects. The CDP projects get into giving people little footpaths, persons who are walking in mud to get to their homes. Drainage, water coming into their homes. Mr. Speaker, we also talk about support for health. We, we talk about support for education and a number of social protection programs this government is engaged in, Mr. Speaker. And sometimes people say, where is the big building you have built in? Where is the big school you built? Where is the highway? Where is the police station? I said, check for it in the people's pocket. We are changing the lives of the ordinary people out there, Mr. Speaker. And you will not see a big highway. You will not see a big structure. You will see the little people, the little people out there. We are making a difference in their pocket, Mr. Speaker. And I look at the work of this government, Mr. Speaker, in keeping with the pension amendment bill as transformative. We are transforming the lives of persons. There are areas where we need to upgrade. There are areas where we replace. There are areas where we improve. There are areas where we beautify. There are areas where we add. There are areas where we repair. And this is the nature of the work that we do. And I see this pension amendment is one where this government will be thanked by the beneficiaries of this amendment. Mr. Speaker, we speak of the minimum wage or the livable wage. Mr. Speaker, according to what the Minimum Wage Commission indicated, about 12,000 to 13,000 persons will benefit from the minimum wage that is coming on stream. That is going to make a difference to the quality of life for our people. And Mr. Speaker, I noticed all of a sudden recently, some people are going by the market and they heard the, the vendors. The vendors are very smart. That's why they call the market the boiling pot. The boiling pot of St. Lucia. In the market, Mr. Speaker, you have persons from all over the country. And if you want to know what's happening in the country, go by the market. So no kind of false hugs will work there. Because they know you, don't, you did not used to come. When I go by the market, Mr. Speaker, I sit with the vendors. And I get to know all what's happening in St. Lucia. In every constituency. Because that is where they realize. You don't try and sit there and eat mangoes with them and hug them. They realize they haven't seen you for a while. And they know you are pretending, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we have to do what we have to do for the people. I'm happy 
that my government, this government, the people's government is addressing the critical matters that will make a difference to the quality of life. Education, health, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet has invested heavily in security so that our people feel safe. Mr. Speaker, every time I reflect and I see we had jazz festival and I saw thousands of people congregating in one location, Mr. Speaker, and I did not hear one incident of violence. I say that is good for the reputation of St. Lucia. And Mr. Speaker, I give my full support to this historic amendment that will improve the quality of life for pensioners. The Prime Minister has also promised them that whenever he gives an increase to public officers, they too will be entitled to an increase because cost of living change and the income cannot remain the same. That is a very positive move. And I give my full support, Mr. Speaker, to the amendment to increase pension to no less than $725 a month, and then the rest that the government gave in other social programs will take care of our people. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.